Since 1985, I've been involved at various stages in the rights movement for young people in care. It seems that children in care that have been used have been used as crash test dummies or feedback machines for a system unable to care for them. It has been crucial to maintain and develop my independence as a writer and creative. The rights movement was often funded by the government. They were lobbying. Clearly, it didn't work. And if it had, there wouldn't have been the recent Rotherham scandal, the Oxford scandal, the Rochdale scandal, the Northern Ireland scandals of, uh, with, uh, of abuse of young people who were in care. These have proven my point that children have been the crash test dummies for a distraught, dysfunctional system set to help them, a system that you could call challenging. The lack of the ability for the institution to care for the child cannot be remedied with a quick fix. An overhaul is needed. Creativity and inspiration is not the monopoly of artists. We are all born with it. It's the one element central to family. Institutions and individuals inside institutions can exercise the full benefit of creative thinking for the workers and those they serve. And what do I mean by creativity? And, and where can this make a difference? By creativity, I simply mean creative thinking. The ability to question everything for the betterment of everyone, all the time. Creativity is thinking without boundary and crowdsourcing responsibility. Creativity is what parents use to solve the problems of their children and of each other. Think of it this way. Our government is filled with adults who are parents or with adults who are children of parents. When a child comes into the care of the local authority, he is le or she is legally parented by the government. How is it that all these people, responsible citizens, and all of the industries that unfold from them, the private foster care industries, the psychotherapeutic industries, how is it that they cannot guarantee the safety of one child. It is my reform that all adults who are children of parents or who are parents themselves or both and, and who are members of parliament pool their ideas of good parenting and apply these good ideas to the child parented by them. To speak more specifically about creativity and inspiration, the great books of our religions were creative works, and the great art of our religions are creative works. Creativity is the carrier of messages and story. To engage with creativity and to seek inspiration is to engage with and seek a higher power. The only responsibility our government has as a parent is to the child in care. Uh, sorry, the, the highest responsibility our government has is as a parent to a child in their care. This is unique and profound and must be taken seriously. Parenthood by lip service has proven to be the breeding ground for abuse. So to enact reform, we must examine and redress our present state of thinking about A, the child in care, and B, the child in care, and B, the institution set up to serve him or her. Just a note here, you know, there's a reason why we found it so easy to say to our children, if you're naughty, I'll put you in a children's home. Somehow, we've come to think of the children's home as full of bad children. That's where abuse starts. It doesn't start with the, with the social workers and it doesn't start with the care industry. It starts with us. 
We're responsible for thinking of the child in care as somebody who will cause a problem, who is a problem that needs to be solved, rather than like our own children, a solution waiting to happen. It is our imaginations which have been, which have been, uh, which have been, uh, which have been restricted when it comes down to the child in care. Most family is about the power of suggestion. When are you going to go to university? Are you going? Are you, go you don't want to go. You don't want to go to university. You don't want to go. You don't want to go. Well, there's a book over there. It's about universities. You don't have to look at it. <laughs> it's just arrived. You don't have to look at the power of... When are you getting married? You're, getting mar you're not getting married. Oh, you don't want to get married. Oh, ooh, no. Don't. We were married at 22. <laughs> Shall we go to your Auntie Jean's wedding? Your cousin's wedding, shall we go? Get ourselves all done up, we'll go to the wedding. You don't want to get married, it's okay. And then when your child comes home from school and says, so comes home and says, I want to go to university, you go, yes, sir. And they go, and I've thought about this myself. You go, yes, of course you have. The invisible power of suggestion. The invisible power of suggestion held in your home. You know how important it is and you will keep saying it and keep saying it until a penny drops or it doesn't drop. And when it doesn't drop and they don't go to university, you follow them down that path. What is the power of suggestion for the child who goes into the care system? If you do that, you know what will happen. Well, we'll move you from the foster parents for a start. If you're naughty, hey? If you're naughty, hey? There's a remand centre over there. If you're naughty, you know what? If you run away, the police will come after you. You don't want the police to come. Suddenly, the, the, the orbit around the child in care smells of bleach and is full of the power of suggestion. And I'll tell you what you must do. You must never talk about your experiences in here as you grow into an adult. The power of suggestion, the amount of adults who spend their lives not telling their children that they were in care, that they were fostered, that they were adopted, as if the shame should be pushed inside of them and locked like a time bomb in the inside. If they open it, it will explode them and everybody around them. The shame is not theirs, it's ours, that we should put that onto them. So, the child in care, I've totally gone AWOL. So, to enact reform... Oh, we must examine and redress our present state of thinking about the child in care and the institutions set up to serve him or her. See, I couldn't do that if I was a lobbying group, could I? You know what I mean? Uh, let us begin with those charged with looking after this most precious asset, the next generation, the most precious asset of any society without parents who's in the children's homes, who's parented legally by the government, the highest paid individuals in local government. It's, if the most important asset to the development of society is the next generation, thus a parent... If a parent will judge themselves above all on how they've done for their child, it stands to reason that the social worker acting as parent of the child on behalf of the government should be the highest paid in local authority services. Period. Social work, social work is both... A lot of social workers in the audience, obviously, there. Social work is both vocational and learned behaviour like parenthood. There's a reason, by the way, that uh, people don't like social workers or that social workers go out and don't talk their story. They don't say, oh, I'm a social worker, when they're going out and, and, and have uh, with, with friends and uh, et cetera. Well, not with friends, but, but, but there, there's a reason. It's because, it's because, and there's a reason why there's been an, an, an enacted prejudice against the child in care. And it's because family is a great PR company for itself. Um, dysfunction is at the heart of all function in families. What happens between these four walls, it's our business. You know, the, the dis dysfunction is a, a celebration of family. It is what families are. The idea that families should not withhold dysfunction inside of them is, is, is ruinous to the PR, because the PR of family is, hey, we're all right, we're all right. Don't talk about my mum. Don't talk about my blah, blah, blah. Hey, in our fault, hey, you, hey, what, you, 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 what, what? 
Don't talk about our family. Our family's all right. The entire idea that we should be a PR company for something that's perfect, that clearly just is not across the board, sets up a sort of... Um, a sort of a, a, a quite serious dysfunction. And the reason that I believe that there has been a prejudice against the child in care is because they are living, breathing proof and acknowledgement that there is dysfunction at the heart of all good functioning families. To admit that the child in care is something brilliant is also to admit that Actually, for all of us, within all of our families, so if I walked into one of your, the big argument in your family, right, the thing that your granddad doesn't talk about, or your dad doesn't talk about, or your mum doesn't talk about, or you don't talk about, where, where every line was crossed, where you felt hurt and you feel like you're going to be hurt forever and you're not going to talk about it whatsoever. Let's just say that that one thing actually came up in the family, right in the front room. It was brought out into the open and there were tears and there was anger and there was, you said this and you did that. Uh, 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 uh. And I walked into that family at that time, somebody should be sectioned. The kids should be put into care for a while. It's in all of us. Kids in care spend their lives with people pointing at them as if they're the ones who are wrong. It's just not the case. 